Hello guys and welcome to DLV Podcast Episode 1. Today I'm excited to share a conversation I had recently with a quite brilliant wildlife conservationist. His name is Nika Paposhvili and in 2014 he discovered a bird that was thought to be extinct in this region called the Velvet Scotter. And in this conversation we go from his journey getting into conservation, the discovery itself, and the work that he's doing now. And I hope to join him soon and to document some of the work that he's doing. So I hope that you enjoy and or learn something and thank you very much for listening. So before we get into the species itself, I would love to hear a little bit about your kind of backstory and how you got into conservation. Is it something in the family? And yeah, what's drawn you to it? <laughs> yeah, I have to say, as I already mentioned, uh, I was born in east part of Georgia, and that was really hard time, Georgia. It was uh, around the time when the Soviet South is collapsed, and people uh, um, were living really poor conditions and we are just try to to stay alive and um, when i was young i was uh, hunting on birds i was collecting mushrooms i was collecting berries and it was our um, how can i say uh, something that uh, my family used uh and uh later when i was around 15 years old i found really old ornithological book and somehow i got interest about this book and tried to um, find some new species for me and then i was trying to find them in the nature. Uh, what and kind of age would this be? What kind of age were you at this time? I was uh, around 14, 15 years old and that was time when I was hunting on dows, ducks, quail and woodcock and uh, we mm, we have a really long river in eastern part of Georgia called Alazani and it was my main place to hunting on ducks at winter. Uh, um, there was um, some species including mallards, teals, uh, dubwalls, sometimes shovelers, pintails, but I found the scotters on the book and I always wanted to see this bird but that time i um i was not know about ecology of this species I just wanted to see but never seen this species on the river especially in georgia and then uh, when i um, graduated at school my family decided to send me to Tbilisi to uh, to get some education. And it was my uh, family's wish to go to um, um, agriculture university to learn um, economy of something. But I somehow sometimes I'm saying I missed four years because after um, after bachelor degrees I went to to the bank and I worked there around four months. But this this probably helped me to find myself because it was really boring when you are sitting full day and tipping and just to. Uh, asking the other peoples and visitors. Yeah, it's good when you are helping the peoples, but it was not my job. And I stopped and 
I went to Ilya State University to study ecology. And that time I met Zura Jawahishvili and probably uh, first question about the birds was, uh, is it possible to see the velvet scotter uh, somewhere in Georgia? <laughs> because it was my uh, childhood dream. And uh, Zura um, had told me uh, that he, um, he has seen this bird in, uh, in uh, 2007 at Lake Tabatsuri, but uh, after uh, that also, uh, this was a time when some people are uh, seeing this species, other lakes in the south part of Georgia. And, but he all also mentioned that, that this species is disappeared now. We probably lost the breeding population. And then Uza, Azura was my supervisor. And after um, uh, master studies, he got a project to monitor uh, waterfalls uh, in east part of Georgia. And I was um, I was leading this field work, and we had a um, lot of uh, plays that needed to monitor and count the birds, like uh, Hanchali Lake, uh, Bugdasheni Lake, uh, Madatapa Lake, Sagamo Lake. These are lakes are a little bit shallow and are good for doubling ducks, uh, but not diving. Right. Maybe this would be a yeah. great opportunity to do a little introduction on the Velvet Scotter, because maybe somebody listening would know nothing uh, and I, even having looked at your work, it's certainly a species that's new to me. Um, and yeah, also, and as you explain that, it would be very interesting as well to know, you know, why this was your childhood dream. Why this species? Because, you know, um, for example, from my perspective, uh, growing up in the UK, it's quite incredible that you have there, there are many interesting species in georgia i've done a little bit of research but for example brown bears this is something really you know unique yeah. i'm just curious yeah i i don't know probably i wanted to see all duck species that we had in georgia and the first time as i mentioned i i was hunting on them and on the book, you can, I will able to show this book. It was a, um, it was not colorful. It's really old one with the um, dark. I don't know how can I say, with the um, white and dark pictures. Yeah, black and white. Yeah, black and white. And um, I just uh, ticked all of almost all of the dogs that I um, have seen or and only walrus scooter i don't know probably it was the um, somehow attracted me i i i, I don't know <laughs> and uh when i finished my work i decided to visit tabatsuri zula told me it was a very deep lake and uh, was not worth to visit because uh, he was not expecting a lot of waterfalls on that lake. And just I visit that lake and just by chance I saw uh, 47 or 48 uh, scooters. They was together. It was uh, October, probably late October, and it was really terrible weather with the um, oh, strong windy and rain. And I saw the black ducks waving on the waves, but I, I was not sure. And when I said this uh, at my university, um, yeah, people said, maybe you see the scooters, but probably they were other birds maybe tufted ducks and because of waves and 
bad condition. That's one thing I wanted to ask you about quickly. In your article, you mentioned this, and it was in 2014, right? right? Yeah. 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 You, you say specifically that when you witnessed this, you had to be kind of shaken out of it, out of this like magical state by somebody else. So in that moment, you weren't 100% sure you knew what you were Yeah, I, I, I was sure because I was uh, looking them maybe hours, maybe no, it was rainy, but uh, I, I was just shocked because uh, it was my dream and they were, they were <laughs> there. And I was uh, really surprised also with this, but I saw the big black birds and with the huge white perch on the wings. And I, I was um, almost sure they were scooters. And uh, that time nobody believed me. And that was the reason next year uh, I went to Tabotspuri with my friend, moved to the island and found the nest. And also just by chance, we got a female scooter. Uh, we caught and uh, we get pictures as a proof. <laughs> and then um, I just, Mm, thought about some found because I realized I uh, mm, it was really worth to work this population. Uh, and that time, mm, my English mm, was nothing. Yeah, I know it's not good now, but uh, that time, uh, I would say. Uh, I knew only two words, maybe hello. And <laughs> Joba, <laughs> <Bye. Matloba. laughs> yeah, and uh, I used the, um, some dictionary and Google translation uh, to um, write a small um, project. And then it was a CLP, Conservation Leadership Program, who will help me, and I would say they are helping after that every day, every time, and not only me, also the scooters, uh, Caucasian scooters, and that are really vulnerable and needs uh, attention. Yeah. And after that, we we were able to uh, to start survey on this bird, and uh, first year is, we found out. This is sorry. This is fast forwarding a few years, right? Because as I understand it, it's 2014 when you first saw them. Yeah, and, uh, uh, the project uh, started uh, around two. 2017, yeah, 2017, and um, our, I would say, our mission was to just find out how many birds we had. I mean, the uh, what was the population size and what was the population status in Georgia, and we also checked all other historical breeding lakes in Georgia and not only in Georgia. I am I was visited in Turkey 2018 and check uh, other four lakes, historical breeding lakes, but no sign also on this lake. And we find out the local uh, collecting the eggs bird eggs and uh, used as a food and so we can I, can try I a small summary just for my brain because I want to check you know that I understand it correctly but this was one of the bits that was really fascinating to me because 
as I understand, beginning in 2017, you've started this extensive research into different lakes in Georgia. And I didn't know about the different sites in Turkey as well. Um, and you found that in all of these areas, there's only one lake where they are successfully yeah. breeding. And not only one lake, one small island in the north of that lake right exactly so exactly. in the whole yeah. region you know in in i i'm assuming the north caucasus in 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 russia the caucasus you know for people listening as well armenia azerbaijan as well as georgia and turkey this is the only place on this little island on this little lake in georgia that they are successfully breeding is that right yeah it's As right a, yeah to be to be honest uh, we we have not good information from Turkey, I mean the Anatolian plateau, but I already have contact the uh, people who are working on birds and uh, they, um, sorry, they are um, saying they uh, lost this breeding population in Turkey, but uh, some, Somewhere in our heart, we all believe uh, that there would be other place, probably in the Anatolian plateau, where the scooters still breeding. Otherwise, this population um, will be in trouble because you know when you have uh, one small population only in one places as you mentioned they are using only one island to breed it's uh, terrible and if Wonderful. something will change uh, rapidly in the future probably we we will lose the scotters in the caucasus and that's why we are uh, working hard nowadays and uh, trying to find out more about this population. I mean, the, um, we are starting now to uh, check all of the historical places. We are uh, working to, uh, to know where these scooters, I mean, the uh, scooters which are breeding on Tabot School late wintering. And also we are thinking to start the a study uh, about the uh, uh, food based food sources because probably it it is important thing for scooters uh, because you know they are um, diver and they need some crustaceans and some small uh, larvae or something to feed and um, yeah unfortunately. Mm. Nowadays, we have only uh, confirmed one breeding place in full Caucasus, and we have around 30, 35 pairs, only 35, maximum 35 breeding pairs at Tabbert Schooly Lake. And these all species breeding on one island which is located in the north part of the lake and we was uh, we are uh, all already we are also working uh, to write the local people hours and uh, to reduce the um, uh, threats uh, and i i would say uh, it's working because uh, nowadays, uh, the local um, no longer collecting the eggs on the island, and also uh, almost all of the fishermen uh, try to avoid fishing the important places. I mean the uh, important places of um, walrus scooters ducklings uh, and. Uh, yeah it's uh it's Have working question, yeah if you don't mind there's um 
various various things that I I think are very fascinating here. Um, in the beginning, obviously, you were talking about in your youth being a hunter, um, and I wonder how. In your article, you talk about um, how you've a lot of your work has been communicating to the local people the importance of this site who, as you've just mentioned, they were going there to collect the eggs. Um, I wonder, has your youth and your experiences hunting been useful to sort of help you to communicate with these people? Um, and secondly, were these local people completely unaware of just how rare these birds were when they were taking the eggs? They didn't know this is potentially the only site in the whole region. Good question. You know that I'm always mm, saying that uh, mm, my hunting skill and the skill that I gain from uh, my childhood, it's always helping me to mm, uh, to relationship with the uh, mm, people and even the foreign people and yeah i also it's also helping me uh, to be good field researcher because uh, i know how and where uh, i found i finding the birds and how to talk uh, to hunters how to talk to um, fishermen and they are always happy when I'm saying it's a familiar thing also for me and I can feel uh, their feeling and it's helped them to be open with me and also um, it's uh, it's real I know the uh, um, what hunters are feeling when they are hunting and getting a success uh, i i i am not hunting uh now but uh uh it's not mean i am against of hunting no it's a um, usual thing for me and we are humans and if we uh, have a good management it's possible to hunt and also have a stable population. Uh, I, I have not, I have not seen the problem with this thing, but now uh, it's really vulnerable population and uh, needs to care about it. And the people, yeah, people don't know about. Uh, this vulnerability. People don't know about uh, um, something on this species. And now all of them, all of them locals and not only locals, uh, I would say that many people in Georgia knows about the scooters and they know they have a species which is uh, a real edge of extinction. Uh, and it's needed to um, care about this species. And also the people, I mean the local people, realized uh, the scooters are able to give them much better than uh, they gain with hunting. Because as you told you, I am always using the local guest house. I am always using the local fishermen to uh, to rent a boat to reach uh, the island. And yeah, I know it's not huge income, but it's some income for them, and they are able to see I am helping them. I am thinking on them. I am not thinking only the scooters. I am thinking the people because they are locals and uh, they need to to have access on the lake. That's why I am always saying that 
forbidden fishing is not uh, uh, good. It will not work because it's uh, it will uh, um, how can I say? Because after that, the people will people um, will protest uh, these things, and we need some kind of um, like a regulation to restrict the fishing with a short period only in the places which is the really important for the scooters and that's all and also mm, uh, we you know the georgia is a geographically mm, located uh, really good place i mean the lot of migrating birds are migrate through the georgia and also we have some endemic species in the caucasus and that's why the lot of bird watchers visiting georgia and uh, i can say the numbers of this kind of uh, tourists is increasing every year and also uh, last year we had uh, some people from america and from some european countries who wanted to see these caucasian scooters and it's also good for the locals they are renting the boats they are renting the mm, uh, small um, houses or flat and also there are some shops and it's not big but it, they are getting some be benefits and i suppose they, yeah. Yeah. and i suppose they can see the potential there for the future as well if it's maybe communicated on more and more the fact that they yeah. are here um and I, I have still quite a few questions um yeah i think uh, and, oh, yeah 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 go on yeah. also i am trying to involve some locals in my project they are helping me in field work and i will give them small salaries like salaries, like a, it's good for them and they are happy with this. And now I I can say I have a, a really good relationship almost uh, with almost all local people. And I have some good friends who are helping me a lot of to communicate with locals and to work uh, on scooters also you know the lake is a uh, managed uh, reserve it's a prote protected area and the rangers are really uh, interesting with this study and they are helping a lot of to communicate the locals and also they are somehow uh, helping me mm, to work on scooters like uh, every year we are working on the island to find the nests and map and uh, monitor the nest yeah the first time it was really unusual thing for people i mean the local people and they they are just a smile because there was some crazy guy who who cared about the birds <laughs> and spending all day to watching them <laughs> chasing them <laughs> yeah but then they realized that i was a uh, real <laughs> you know the uh, once i remember i was working uh, in Acharian mountains and one old man went with me and asked what what i am doing there and when i explained and everything i was there to monitor the birds he was smiled and <laughs> then asked again okay please tell me the real reason you are from military or something 
<laughs> you know, the people sometimes, or Georgian people sometimes really hard to understand why people care about uh, birds and <laughs> working on them. Like probably you see some uh, people who was surprised then a lot of people are standing and watching the raptor migration. It's already the usual thing in Sahalwa show because it's uh, maybe they started 10, maybe more years ago, and it's now usual thing, but at first time <laughs> it was really hard for bird watchers, for dressers, because uh, sometimes it's really hard to explain your feeling to others. Right, understood. <laughs> understood. It's, um, it's, again, you, you referenced in the article how um, some of the local people you employed are actually some of the fishermen to help guard uh, part of that uh, important water area, as I understand. It's interesting because um, me and my, my colleague, we spent some time, very fortunately, um, with snow leopard conservationists in Kyrgyzstan. And the leader of the organization, um, many of the people he was employing to help with the projects were previous in, in previous lives, hunters. Um, and it was their knowledge of the local wildlife and environment, you know, mm -hmm. that gave them the skills to be super useful um, and important and really, really important um, uh, people in these projects of conservation. So that, that was something definitely new to me then, um, which, is, which is interesting. Uh, I, I wanted to ask just quickly, this is maybe more of um, a specific subject and you're, you're, you're telling some brilliant stories, but I was really interested in the involvement and it seems to be almost a battle between the Scotters and the Gulls, the Armenian Gulls. And uh, you say in your article that it was something that you kind of realized later, the impact that these Gulls were having in, as I understand, almost stealing the, the young. Um, could you talk a little bit, a little bit about how you discovered that? And uh, mm -hmm. I've read. Yeah, yeah, of course. Some... I, 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 I will try <laughs> with my English. <laughs> no, it's great. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, after first year, we find out the main problem was that the local collecting the eggs, and we face on this challenge. And I would say from 2018, it's decreasing, and now no one collecting the eggs. And after um, first big achievements, it was big achievements for us when the uh, people stopped the collecting the eggs, and we thought that the all of the problem mm, was already mm, gone, so, and the scooter uh, were able to breed successful. But then we found that the they, the numbers of nesting females, I mean the uh, nest numbers, is increasing, and from two thousand. Uh, 19, it's about uh, 28, 30, 33 nests we have every year. But the hatching success and the fledging success was um, really poor. And then we, there, the first, uh, when we heard about the predation by Armenian girls, it was a one local um a fisherman who told this about this thing us he told us that he saw the how to uh, how gulls are grabbing the scotters babies wow. and then we mm, we 
decided to monitor full uh, August and be sitting and observing full day on the brutes and collecting uh, and sorry and um, uh, writing all of the behaviors changing every every five minutes and then we find out that uh, around the 60 percent of ducklings died with cow predation very first day uh, and also uh, the gal sometimes not always chasing the birds from the islands because you know the gal are territorial and uh, sometimes they are predating on the eggs also and the another um, I would say the raptor uh, because we know the gal is not raptor but in our cases is uh one of the uh one of the top raptors <laughs> at lake tabard school but we have a marsh harrier and we found that the also marsh harrier are predating on the eggs and also marsh harrier are able to uh, hunting on the female sitting on the nests and in this reason we lost the three females two years ago uh, and we don't know the which is the uh, uh, value of this population lose three females but rise the around 20 fledged ones or rise the five fledged ones and uh, don't close the adult females because you know this uh, this species live really long time and the uh, um, juveniles are not able to breed next season they probably starting breeding around after two years later and yeah, we, I, in my opinion, every every bird is worth for us now, and uh, I don't know how, but we need to to try to uh, save the adults as much as we can. And that's why I'm working uh, uh, now to find the wintering places because you know the uh, wintering places is maybe much more uh, interesting for us because we know the winter is really hard time for um, for animals for birds and we need to be sure that. There is no um, no threats in the wintering ground. So, what information and, do you have so far about the wintering locations? Uh, yeah, we are. Um, we just um, we um, start working two years ago. We are using the uh, uh, light level geolocators. It's small things that fitted on the leg and we have some uh, data and i can say uh with this data um, most of the scorters are wintering on the black sea and uh, we are trying to publish this data and probably uh in this autumn it will be open for everyone uh, and yeah now uh i am waiting i'm so excited with this summer because uh, uh i need to get uh, some other loggers back to get a 
more information about wintering ground. And in June, we are planning to visit Tabatskuri around one week and working on the islands to catch a birds and get a light level geolocators back. Uh, and yeah, I, I jump um, to predation again. It's uh, one of the top problem now, but um, we had the, we, we, we thought about the uh, controlling gull population. I mean the lethal or non-lethal control. There are some um, ways um, to control the gull population, but uh, as I mentioned, Two years ago, uh, we lost the three females uh, by the predation of uh, marsh harriers. And we know that the gull uh, are uh, really good to protect the island for other species. And it's really, it's a benefit of scotters to breeding with these islands because they are safe safe with the gulls um, guarding you know wow. and if we control the population i mean the gull population it give high chance other species like a marsh carrier and we have also the lesser spotted eagles and other um, uh, predators on this area. It gives them high chance to predating on the scooters because the island will no longer protected by gulls. And that's why um, we are thinking about this. It's really hard decision. Also, it's really hard decision for humans because uh, it's hard when you trying to control one population to increase another but mm, we need more studies more data to get mm, last decision but uh, nobody mm, uh, nobody argued that the scooter are um, priority in this case. Uh, we need to do everything, everything to save this population in the Caucasus. And why do you believe that so passionately? Sorry. So. Uh, I, I suppose we're kind of, in in a way, summarizing our first conversation at least. Um, you say we need to do everything we can to save this population. And of course, I agree from my outside perspective. But why do you believe that so passionately? What What about this species do you think is so special and needs to be protected so strongly? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I would try to answer this question. First, you know the it's a biodiversity, and we are proud uh, with the Caucasus biodiversity and uh, losing each element of this biodi in this biodiversity. That means our biodiversity increasing down, and that's why we uh, we have to care about. Uh, the nature and this biodiversity and other things that uh, uh, I would say is that, that this is the um, isolated population. I mean the uh, scooters are isolated in the Caucasus and uh, probably uh, they are genetically different of uh, of the scooters uh, which are breeding in north part of Europe and uh, uh, 
uh, north or western of um, Asia. You know, that probably means the Caucasian scooters is a um, subspecies, maybe separate species, like uh, um, some years ago, the people thought that the um, uh, scooters um, which are breeding in the, uh, North America and North Europe um, who was the same. But after some um, uh, genetical study, uh, we, um, ha we got a few different species like uh, Melanita fusca, Melanita deglandi, and Melanita stegenegger. The last one is uh, uh, distributed in the uh, east part of Asia. And that's why I'm thinking it's important species and we need to uh, make uh, this genetically analysis to be sure about this species but even it's the same species i mean the same as we have in north part of europe it's really important because if we lose this population that means we we never get back from north in the caucasus and that means that uh, not only georgia we lose the species. Full of the Caucasus, full region, we lost the species. And yeah, it. You know, the sometimes when I'm saying and uh, try to explain, especially Georgians, why we need to care about the nature, about the birds and mammals. Yeah, sometimes then I'm feeling that we have a peoples who needs also to care, we, not only in Georgia, in the world, who are in trouble, like uh, now the people in Ukraine. Yeah, and maybe would be better to our um, strengths to go to protect humans and to give them a little bit better life but on the opposite side i would say we can't live without the nature without the birds without the mammals and there must be someone who will care about birds nature it doesn't matter and yeah that's why i'm happy with my work and always try to do uh, more to save the species and not only the scooters also the other species that that are in trouble in georgia uh, we have a lot of species that needs some conservation measures I hope like. that <laughs> hopefully we can speak about that in in more detail in in a future conversation because I know that you haven't got that much time today but I think your passion for what you do is very clear and uh it's very easy to yeah. do. And it's it's very inspiring for somebody like me that is hoping to communicate the work of people like you i think that's what i want to do to help celebrate the really passionate and uh and important work that people like you are doing so it's very very inspiring for somebody like me um and i wonder as well i suppose um if you maybe you would agree with this um when i was speaking with uh the He's actually the head of WWF Central Asia, and they are working on a project to um, reintegrate uh, tiger populations to Central Asia, specifically to Kazakhstan first, around the Lake Balkash. 
and uh, this is a bit of research that I've been doing uh, for about a year now. And I remember he told me that when we talk about the tiger, we don't just talk about the tiger. It's a symbol for other species. You know, it almost yeah, as an example. So, for example, as you just touched upon, I feel like the work that you're doing now is not just about, and, and it's incredible what you're doing for this one species, but it's also about uh, protecting a whole ecosystem, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, because it's not about only one species. Yeah, to protect this island, to protect this lake, that means that we are saving full ecosystems, and it's, it's needed. And probably you will be able to see this place this amazing and beautiful area and it's really amazing it's other georgia it's other caucasus everything is a different there and i'm i'm really excited and can't wait the day when i will go again to Tabatsuri. Just I have a contact with the locals and the lake, you know, the, it's frozen now. It's not melt yet. And the, also I imagine the Scotters feeling because uh, last year they arrived early April around, I, I was at Tabatsuri at 10 April and they already were there and it's also important how they are sensing the lake is melt or not we don't know maybe they are it's not far i mean the black sea not far and especially for them is not hard to fly on the Tabasco Lake and see what's happening there. But somehow they are feeling that the spring is already came and returning back. It's really amazing. They're waiting for uh, you. They're waiting for their friend to arrive. They're waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I am uh, communicate the locals every day, and as the lake will melt, I I will go there and uh, check the islands and check the lakes, and it will be probably end of April, and probably you will be able to come with me and see these places. Yeah, totally. And I will ask about uh, uh, your plan. Are you going to stay at Borjomi next few days or months? How long are you staying to Georgia? And That's what is your place. main uh, uh, main things to do? That's that's a really um nice question maybe to end the recording on uh, for anybody that is maybe listening um, and it's kind of like a an unknown uh, so I suppose I'll end the recording now and maybe we can continue that conversation but I'll just say for what you've said in this conversation so far I mean thank you so much Didi Madloba Zamal and uh, yeah definitely <laughs> Yeah, really, really looking forward to to uh, to seeing you there.